So, welcome back to uh, my YouTube channel, or if you're viewing on my Facebook page, I'm Elaine M. Bergstrom, and today I'm going to share with you a little bit again about Boku size lines and brushwork and ink work, and I found this image in a Boku size 100 views of Mount Fuji, and I'm in the process of teaching some sketching trees, mountains, and rocks classes, and because it's summer, it's a great time to be outdoors. So I kind of started this so that I, you could see it because it takes a little bit of time to set it up and balance it. So well, I just drew it with some pencil kind of check some of the shapes, the negative images or spaces I should say in between to kind of see if I'm getting it. And then I did put a little bit of my Kuretake gray pencil, uh, this is 097, and just laid that in following the image a little bit and then just taking my refillable water brush pen and kind of filling it in a little bit. As you can see, when it's wet, it blends a lot better. So it, it takes time to put in the pine needles, and if you look at them, there's some oops, darks and lights that Hokusai use. So you can take your ink pen or brush pen and kind of make your fan shapes, and where they're a little bit deeper, you can just add a little bit more ink over the color. So that was done with the Kurotaki. You have two different greens. And just following the outside of, of that grouping um, over here. And then just any more lines will give it a little bit more depth. So wherever it's darker, seems like this tail end of the branch. So I started with some maybe in between pressure. So let's see if it's showing up. Some it's like hatch marking. If you want it darker, the lines get closer or adding a little bit more to the edge. So looks like there's one down here. Kind of make your fan shape. And then what I did was take a Kuretake brush pen 041 and just add that in. So I'm starting to get some darks and lights. I also used a blue green which says it's 400. I don't see a color name. I don't know how they label that but um, that blue green kind of gave it some depth as well. Let sit a little bit and I can continue. So I'm going to put in the fine lines. So I started with the brush pen and just found that he had used even finer, finer line. And I'm overlapping. So all I did to get my frame was to take my little pencil case 
and trace that. And then I kept the outside edge <coughs> not enclosed. So I opened it up so I could expand. <coughs> Excuse me. The other thing that I did was I took my brush pen and you can see I have maybe some darker areas and then you know went around the edge to accent some of that and put some moss dots around. So if I hold it straight I get better circular techniques. I shouldn't say techniques, but um, the shape. I don't want them too big. Um, his are so gentle and refined. So they're really pressed down. Between the dotting and the pine, it can take take a while, but I encourage you to get outside, look at pines. Um, where I live, I've been seeing the longleaf pine and the wobbly and the slash pine. Um, you know, different parts of the country have different pines. Uh, I always like the pines that have a lot of personality and texture. I guess I put a few more on here than I needed to. Make sure they're not just dangling, like maybe this is from behind is together. And give it a second to kind of dry. Um, go back to your fountain pen and add dots as well. So since we're sketching, um, you know, I feel free to be able to use whatever works for me. Um, I don't have to be totally traditional. I kind of like the both. I've been using ink since I was young and influenced by this type of work. So let's get some pine needles out here. Um, sometimes I like to start with a point and bring all the pine needles to that. And, and they kind of overlap each other some density and if you go lighter you can keep that lightness or go back over it to increase the value change I wish they talked more about what kind of trees he drew. I guess I just need to research what's in Japan. But if you know, please let me know in a message. But these particular pine needles, he really radiates out almost like a circle. And if you study different Chinese and Japanese artists, there's variations in the style of how they do that. Now this can all be done with your brush pen with no pressure. Meaning Don't press too hard. Keep it as fine as you can. But it's a great way to 
deep in her, you know, create more depth in there. Now he kept the pine needle, like the trunks of the pines, white against the contrast. So what we could do, um, not sure, I think these are waterproof. Let's, see. Let's test it out. Once it dries, sometimes they can't smear them. Let's see. Yeah. So you have to be careful around the edges. But that's actually a technique, is actually to make little clouds of, of color there. You could always take some of this color and bring it down here. So I'm going to go ahead and get out some oh, watercolors. So if you follow along my six tubes, I made a little box for that. And I recently bought the core palette box. And I'm testing it to see if I like it. So it has more than six colors, but I liked the colors that were included. So let's pull that out and take. Uh, oops. I have a <laughs> sprayer. Just what then? Let's go ahead and show you with the six tubes. Uh, that's what I teach with just six tubes of paint. And you basically activate the colors. This just protects that. So I have to decide maybe a light ultramarine blue color. And I'm going to use my refillable brush. This one's a little bit smaller. Um, but because I have to weave maybe around. I'm taking some ultramarine blue, which is my warmer blue. I'm going to thin it. Let's just put that in. I have to be careful because um, I think that I don't know if the greens water soluble. I thought they were just trying to find that. These are the zig clean colors. Light green. It says water base. So. Doesn't mean they'll be permanent. Now it gives it a really nice contrast. Oops, get some green in there. Up. should bring out um, Fuji. I saw Mount Fuji and it's beautiful. 
it kind of peeked out at us at different times. There are some pines down here. I hope you're able to paint with me and draw. But there's a reason the master set to practice what the masters drew. Um, he studied his brushwork and he didn't use a fountain pen. It's kind of bleeding because of the white waterproof and in the paint. really see what they accomplished. And then of course you can always change to your stuff. But if you like a particular artist, I would study them. In the fall of 2022, I'll be teaching a class creating and style masters. And I pick five different artists. We talk, we learn about the artist style. And then uh, the class will be able to create either by copying a piece of work or by creating something from their style. It's amazing how creative students are. Um, doesn't take away from your artistic. Think of years ago, classic artists trained with masters and attributed their work to artists now. It's all, you know, copyrighted and not really protected, but people take what they want, unfortunately. And use what they want from artists, thinking they're entitled. But I always tell students, if you do use an artist's work, make sure you give them credit. Especially photographers, because we use a lot of photographers' artwork. So I'm kind of building up. Um, there is some branching down here. Let's see if we could bring it in. The parks nearby me. Um, I thought it was the long leaf pine that was growing, and those have the longest leaf uh, needles of, I think, all the pines. But still not an expert. Um, I think I look to study them. And sometimes it's better to go down and then get wider. You can start out. Okay. So you can see how um, making just dots and pine needles takes a while. <laughs> 
I really like it. I think if you really enjoy this, or it's, you know, not for you. Now, don't forget, you can use your uh, brush pens. That would go much quicker. And if you don't want to follow focus size, go out. Go out into nature. And tell me what you discover. If you know pines or you know hopeless size pines, I'd love, love to know firsthand. Another thing to study is how the trees branch, you know. Some of them go upwards, some of them go downwards. Let's put in some dots here. Then you could kind of see if something needs to be darker or lighter, and you can, you know, make some choices. So I'd love to see your work if you want to post. Um, with comments, you probably can upload a photograph and show me your kinds. But you really did include a lot of pine needles here. So I hope this helps you to explore um, Hoku size. Pines. I know I've done a few of them. But it's just fascinating. And there's a lot of um, Asian plants around that are actually invasive. Um, but they just have that beautiful Asian feel that I'm drawn to. I wouldn't plant any more of them because they're not good for the area I live in, but still beautiful. So let's see if I can just kind of scoot so you can see that I'm just letting this border out. And then um, I would put today's date and um, say. Hokusai. I don't know if it has a title. Just look. But it's Hokusai number 45. Pine trees. And I don't know the season, I don't know the time of day, I don't know anything, but um, I can kind of maybe reference that. Add some dots, texture, plus dots. I noticed that the pine needles, I probably said it already, but that they're clumpy looking. They're in clumps. Let's bring some of them up. just like the softness of these markers. Now that really brings it out just here in that gray tone. Hope my voice isn't too hard to hear today. Just kind of 
<laughs> there we go, and, and of course, I'll probably add my seal, chop, and post, post this. So, enjoy your day. If you're enjoying the videos on YouTube or Facebook, please subscribe, follow, like, and uh, let me know what you're doing out there. Love to see um, your trees and how you're approaching uh, the pine trees. Probably need to put in some green pines. Now these are actually probably lighter. But, um, I could mix up a light yellow green with my watercolors. I could use a water soluble brush. So we can only imagine what he really saw. Um, he never put he never put color to his prints because they always hired a expert printmaker, and they printed the colors for him. So enjoy and um, learn a little bit about pines. Thanks.